uh, provide us with some good ideas. If they will be good, maybe we will implement them. But if they will be something superb, definitely we will implement them. People who are making 3D city models, 3D semantic models in Finland, it's such a small group, so it's, it's like a family. Few people here, and if we do separately the same things, it, it doesn't work at all. People will be living and working there. And when this is done, the goal is for Otaniemi to be energy self-sufficient. So right now, it is time to create the tools for this enormous task. Here what we're talking about for OPEN is that businesses and the city and users can put their data together so that you have very low friction for adding a new service. About our Elisa Hackathon challenge for you. How to engage citizens to participate in city de development? We have like a temperature data for all the single apartments, simulated temperature data for all the individual apartments in that data model. So that's about it. We hope you can use this information somehow and let's see what you, what you guys come up with. What I'm going to present today is the IBM Bluemix, which is the uh, uh, platform as a service offering what we have. And it is more than that, it's more like a di digital innovation platform. How 3D city models, how they live before they sort of become open and usable for general public. You don't want to limit your possibilities or your ways or ideas to go, to go into proprietary closed source data, API, standard or whatever. Complexity, city, 3D model. If we are to empower citizens to add information to it, we have to give a way for them to understand it. So we'll start with Estia, the group number one. Spirit of our buildings, Talon Hinki. Come on. Yeah, so we started this hackathon by thinking about how buildings communicate with people and um, how that if buildings have all these data like the heating or electricity usage or water usage or the occupancy data, that we we're trying to figure out a way that how the building could effectively communicate its data and therefore kind of the health of the building with the people that use the building. A data-driven adaptive lighting and wayfinding system that promotes space sharing for energy saving and also allows building to communicate with people through lighting and through uh, multiple devices. And we also have a, at the back end a, an analytics module of energy data and we visualize these data to, uh, for people to understand how they use uh, energy. The whole concept was that the smart building isn't that kind of building where there is just tablet and the tablet has nothing to be inter integrated with the actual interior design and the architecture of the building. Plan P, which is a uh, uh, name of our city planning game. You can play a planner with this uh, uh, geographic information. Buildings there. So you can see that it's actually quite, quite a lot. But um, of course, many building models could be brought here, uh, just like the G data. But it's... Uh, it's meant to be really simple and fast too, and not, not, a, not just a game, but 
for a tool for real use. Uh, we actually have already used this in, in our organization and uh, arranged some workshops around this. And Today I present, you, I present you a demo that I've been developing in this hackathon as a continuous, continuation to a pre-existing solution plan. This demo is an early phase of a solution that delivers a sort of interactive BIM model for the construction industry, the pre-market, apartments and buildings. The Espo, Espo city data or the Otaniemi building data that we received for the hackathon and also make it uh, usable through voice controls and have this all running on real time in Unity 5. See the white church. Do we have sound? Take me to the island. Thank you. So our application is called uh, Live Tweets. So we, we access tweets mostly for the experiment we used the 3D CT hack tag. So you can see in the application there is a there is a tweet logo on the building of the design factory. So it means the live tweets are coming from that building. There is a gathering of people are tweeting from there and uh, can you show the uh, live tweets. When somebody clicks on it, all the live tweets are shown. So people can see. So the problem that we wanted to tackle was that when, when you are designing uh, cities, you often make these uh, miniatures out of them, but there is still quite a gap between the virtual model and the physical model. And we wanted to make uh, an augmented reality ap application that would kind of function as a bridge between these two. Yeah. Basically, the functionality here, you can actually uh, put the different texture here. This is um, copper, yep. I believe. Yeah, the copper you can put directly place on the 3D model here. Um, and uh, there is another texture which is uh, wood. And with this bar, you can see the different. After a few years, what it would look like in the, in the real world. Uh, of course, we started from the data perspective as we are developers. We wanted to get known to a new technology and see what we can do with it. We would have data collection, data monitoring in real time, uh, those added into a 3D city map so that we would have like an improved living envi environment. We would have a building selected and then some data shown about the specific building. Um, here, for example, yeah, we have this building selected and we have some room information selected a building and we have selected another building so for each building or building a group we have this uh, data that has been have been monitored here or are being monitored thank you so the basic idea is that you don't know where your class is you take our application it's on a phone probably you put where you are, where you want to go, and then, um, well, okay, and then you just can see this 3D model that takes you to the location. And it also, we have inside spaces now, so you can uh, navigate inside buildings. So it's quite easy to get where you are. So here we have done an actual application. We can see the map of Otanem here. So we again download the information from the internet, and then we start going. And here you have uh, information about an underpass. So maybe if we get uh, 3D data about the route, we could also implement that. Like where are underpasses? How do I get under this road and stuff like that? Yes, please. The maps itself is not that ex exciting. You can have maps in phone books and everything. But when you uh, build services on it, then it becomes exciting. When you have a fast search or a 
navigation function or say Uber built on it, then it really kind of kind of starts to take off. This is a screenshot from a, a kind of a running version of uh, that I took this morning on the, on the intersection. There.